Hi everyone, my name is Aran Kinsborn and I'm excited to deliver today's keynote on how to scale your continuous testing with test automation that you can actually trust uh, for the Vivid Community Days event. Uh, truly excited to be here. Um, and uh, just a word about myself before we get started. I'm a chief evangelist, product manager, and also an author at Perfecto, which is a Perforce company. Uh, I'm the author of the three books. Latest one is the Accelerating Software Quality with AI and Machine Learning. Over 20 years in the space of software development and testing. So I wouldn't say I've seen it all, but I've seen enough, uh, hopefully, to give you some value on how you can really build a test automation that you can trust. So in today's session, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to uh, feature the three acronyms, CI, CD, and CT, uh, talk a bit about the relationship, what actually enables what. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about how test automation enables continuous testing and give you some keys for success, uh, some kind of a strategy based on my experience and some of my successful customers' experience uh, to help you uh, either fine tune some of your existing processes or, uh, you know, I've uh, seen organizations actually ramping up and uh, redoing a lot of their practices in the, the recent reality, which is mostly digital, just to make sure that they are really ready for, uh, you know, remote testing and, uh, you know, digital user experience. Uh, I'm also going to feature some uh, items around test visibility and how uh, testing visibility uh, enables the automation that you can trust. It builds the confidence in what you are delivering and also expedites the fast feedback that you need. Um, during and after uh, this session, keynote, feel free to ask any questions through the different panels. I wanted to start uh, today's session because, you know, we are living in a new digital reality in 2020. Everyone is uh, remote uh, and, you know, in many businesses today, digital is the only way to make business, to do business. And I actually, uh, you know, in one of my recent visits to the Best Buy uh, here in Boston, I have seen this ad on the Best Buy shop, in, on the Best Buy store window. And I thought it would be a nice uh, kind of uh, example, real life examples on how our lives changed over the past year. And, you know, when Best Buy are confident about writing such a slogan, always open at bestbuy.com, uh, a, it means that they are obviously doing, uh, I hope, uh, good testing of their website. And B, it actually puts a lot of pressure on them because if that, that website is down, obviously their credibility, their business is suffering. So, uh, you know, today many of our businesses are either mobile or web and they need to function, they need to work 24 by seven, both from functionality, performance and accessibility. And it can only be applied through good continuous testing, production monitoring, and other quality uh, best practices. So before we start uh, featuring the CT, you know, the continuous testing, I just want to uh, start, you know, with the basic terms. I know that many of you online are familiar with, but I just want to connect everything together so it's very clear, uh, you know, about from a messaging perspective. So. Obviously, DevOps and uh, my colleagues from Microsoft uh, have defined it very good. It's a compound of development and operations, uh, a union of people, processes, and technology that continuously provide value to customers. You can only provide or deliver value to customers when you are continuously testing, when you are uh, sure about the value that each and every feature a component that you are adding into your software really works, really performs at high scale, okay? So DevOps is not just about agility and about running fast, that's the agile term. DevOps is also about delivering value when everyone is working together from dev to test to ops, IT, business, everyone is working together throughout the pipeline to support the goal of providing continuous value to their customers. To do it, uh, they implement this pipeline throughout a CI-CD uh, process, which is the continuous integration and continuous delivery. But continuous integration and continuous delivery are going through different phases. And each and every phase 
need to have a quality gate, okay? A quality gate means that you cannot really submit something for a build uh, process after you commit the code without either doing some unit testing or doing any kind of uh, validations to ensure that what you have done uh, or committed is either isn't breaking something old or something that exists <clears throat> and B, obviously, that it works. So that's the CI part. But then you go through build acceptance testing, functional and regression testing, non-functional testing, acceptance testing sometimes be, uh, using and by the, the customers or by you know crowd testers up until you can deploy to production. Well, this seems a long process with automation that exists today. You can make this process quite efficient and quite fast. But to make it quite efficient and quite fast, because as I mentioned, you do have quality gates in each and every phase, you need to have this continuous testing notion and process in place that is being practitioned by multiple personas, okay? So if you remember, the DevOps was all about delivering high value features, code, software to your customers. Continuous testing is similar, but high value tests that eliminate business risks so you can deliver these high value business features to your client. So continuous testing is the ability that you can have through test automation, of course, to uh, run the most high valuable test cases as part of your software delivery pipeline to obtain fast feedback, to identify business risks that are associated with your recent code changes, okay? And how do you know that your test cases are valuable? How do you know that they are going to address business risks? I'm going to answer that very, very soon. Um, my colleague Dan Ashby, you know, created this nice visual. And if you know, if you abstract or you look at the previous slides that I talk about the different quality gates in the CI CD pipeline, that's exactly that. You know, you want to be able to test here and here and here, you know, in each and every phase, just to make sure that you, hey, uh, you a, have the, the right feedback upon each, uh, you know, task or activity in the pipeline. It can be from planning perspective, uh, requirements gathering, or, you know, the first code commit, the integration to the, to the CI, the functional testing, build acceptance testing, the deployment to production, and also monitoring in production, the shift left and shift right, you know, uh, merge of you know the, the two different edges of testing. So you want to be able to test across each and every phase and continuous testing from the previous slide exactly enables you to do this efficiency ICD uh, game or process. Unfortunately, you know, and the title of this keynote is, you know, automation that you can trust. To have an automation that you can trust, you need to kind of uh, resolve a lot of the challenges that are out there. And these are just a few of them. You know, you look at uh, automation skill set that is available inside your organizations, testing that is done in a different silo, uh, the ability to automate advanced scenarios, how much time it takes you to analyze test results from a regression suite that might consist of, you know, 500 test cases, 10,000 cases. How much time do you spend here? This is a challenge, okay? How can you merge your latest and greatest test automation code into the pipeline so it matters? So the feedback is really, you know, continuously uh, flowing into your pipeline from the, from the developers towards the developers. And test environments. Test environment is not just about the, the setting them up, but also making sure that they are always up to date and relevant, okay? How your uh, code is designed for testability whether it's unit testing, functional API, UI, and many others, you need your developers to really make it easier for you as a test automation engineer to, to automate, to test and uncover uh, risks. Otherwise, you will deal with a lot of escape defects to production. What is breaking today's test automation? Okay, we've seen that there are challenges in creating test automation, but once you already created test automation scenarios, I've just collected a few of the most common things that I see, you know, in today's reality. I've, see, I've seen, you know, lack of test automation, ongoing maintenance. Some organizations are just building and piling up test automation scenarios, but they are neglecting to maintain 
over time the test automation scenarios and that makes them either <clears throat> outdated flaky okay we see you know three times four times the same test running and failing and no one really takes action okay that's a waste of resources waste of, waste of time and money and this might also uh, cover an existing defect if you have an uh, a test case that you decided that it's part of the cycle and it fails because it's flaky or outdated, it might, it, you know, it can be a lose-lose situation for you because you are A, wasting time and resources, as I mentioned, but you are also maybe missing on a defect that this test, once it's working fine, can uncover. So this is one uh, thing that is breaking automation. The second is the, the lack of treating test automation uh, code as production code, not following uh, the best practices and design patterns can be the page object model, singleton composition factor with a, a bunch of design patterns for coding uh, that applies to test automation that needs to be taken care of and be part of your overall, uh, you know, test automation processes. Test environment issues, you know, it can be mobile, it can be web, it can, it can be both. I mentioned earlier about the challenge, but, you know, even if you set up a test environment, it can be, you know, a set of mobile devices or browsers, if you are not taking care of updating them, maintaining them, making sure that they're always ready, always available, your test cases will fail or will result in uh, irrelevant test results. Uh, and this, this is a waste, okay? DevOps and waste do not go together. Ready state. This is something that I initially wanted to put under the best practices, but I wanted to make it kind of stand up, uh, stand out, because I think this is something that we keep on, especially in the digital landscape of mobile and web, where we are, when we are dealing with so many software updates and changes to the mobile OS and to the desktop web, uh, web uh, browsers, we see that the initiation of the test is not always taken care of, meaning your device under test is not in ready state mode when you start testing. It cannot handle properly pop-ups, security alerts, interruptions that sometimes you, have, you can expect, sometimes you can't, but you need to get ready for them. If you're not putting at any given time your device under test, which again can be anything, can be your desktop, your mobile, or your browser, uh, and it's not in ready state, your test automation isn't something that you can trust, isn't reliable, and it will in any, in eventually results in, again, waste, failures, escape defects, and all the things that I've mentioned earlier. So you want to make sure that you are looking at the best practices here, you are following them as an ongoing process. As I mentioned earlier, when you're talking about continuous testing, especially in DevOps, you're dealing with three different personas, the dev, the SDET, and the business testers. As a key for success, and I mentioned in my keynote, I'm going to give you some keys for success. I'm serving a lot of enterprise customers, huge organizations which have so many different and distributed teams. They need this merge of technologies and people to really get the highest test automation coverage that really works. For that, what I'm seeing is that, you know, uh, these organizations are successful when they're able to match the technologies, the frameworks like Espresso and Cypress for the developers, Selenium and Appium for the SDETs, you know, BDD, Cucumber or Quantum, some a framework that Perfecto is offering, uh, which is an open source, but again, it's BDD to the business testers. When you can combine the three objectives and the technologies together with the skills that you have, you can really maximize your test automation success and coverage. So keep in mind, mixing technologies Personas, skill set is one key for your success. If you have organizations uh, that have, you know, strong skill set in Python or in Java or in JavaScript, you know, make sure that you are really, you know, aware of that skill set and you make sure that you are enabling them to be successful through the frameworks and technologies that they are using. There is no uh, point of forcing a large team of, you know, 10 testers to only focus on one technology when, when only two or three developers in the team are really strong in that technology and the other seven maybe would be more, more successful and can deliver a better test automation output with Cucumber, okay, or BDD. 
Next is about scaling test automation and some best practices. You know, we all talk about shift left for so many years, I would say even a decade, but shift left is not just two words. It's an art. It's something that, again, combines the three different personas that I mentioned earlier, combines the three different or set of different test automation types, you know, unit, functional, non-functional, API, and stuff like that, and enables these components and these uh, personas to do this test automation as early as possible in the cycle uh, by, you know, it's not something that you want to force on the organization. The organization needs to enable the process from the get-go, you know, from the feature kickoff, from the sprint, from the requirements initiation, through the deployment to production. These three different personas need to have whatever they need, the, the information, the documentation, the access to the tools, the access to the test environments, so they can really do uh, testing as early as possible. And this is why we call it building build in quality test by testing early. Okay. But it's not about just testing early. If you go back to the definition of continuous testing, it's also about what to test, what to include in my sprint. Okay. What to include in my regression suite. And this is something that many organizations are failing to do right. They are building good automation and then they just leave it as part of the ongoing regression cycle. Why? Because it just runs and sometimes it doesn't fail. That's not a good enough excuse. It piles up and it takes too much resources, it takes too much time, and at the end of the day, it doesn't bring value. You know, I define continuous testing as the highest valuable test cases to identify business risks. Go back now to your regression suite, which might be, you know, a thousand test cases, and ask yourself, are you sure that these 1,000 test cases that you are running on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis are really giving you the right value that you are looking to get, okay? My gut feeling is the answer would be no. Sometimes it will be 20% that are a waste. Sometimes it will be even 50%, okay? I'm not saying don't test. I'm saying test a lot and test continuously, but test against what's right, what brings you value, and what brings you value tends to change from one sprint to the next, or from one big feature release to the next feature release. It's all about continuous testing and continuous maintenance and looking and auditing your test scenarios so you keep up with what changes to the product, what changes in your user usage, what changes in the market. Sometimes you're just testing on platforms that aren't yet or still available in the market, you know, iOS 11. Okay, iOS 11 is very, very poor on usage and market share. And if it's still something that you are testing against, you're wasting some, some of your time and resources Well, you can put more testing running on the iOS 14 and the latest platform, okay? So the scope and the coverage is a key for your success, is another key for your success. Parallel testing. Parallel testing gives you three main benefits, increased coverage, faster execution speed, which means getting faster feedback to your developer. You can do much more in a less amount of time and get better feedback to your developer. You can use JUnit, you can use TestNG, you can use other data providers that the technology part, but you really need to make sure that when you're doing continuous testing, you are using queuing, sharding, parallel execution, parallel testing. Otherwise, obviously you're wasting time and you're delaying the feedback. And that's an obvious key, but it's uh, sometimes hard to implement because it involves resources, maintenance, but you know, the return on investment in parallel testing is higher than the investment in making it work. So I do recommend that if you're not parallelizing your test automation on web, on mobile, well, which, which are so wide and the scope is so big, you are missing out. An additional uh, point here is enforcing and empowering the entire DevOps team to work in an open and integrated environment, okay? Uh, at Perfecto, Perfecto is a cloud solution for mobile and web testing, uh, supporting almost all the open source technologies that you can think of uh, from uh, Appium, Selenium, TestNG, JUnit, um, XUI test, uh, Tricentis, our own quantum BDD framework, uh, and many, many more. It's embedded into the process and it's embedded because 
we are getting such requests from our customers. Our customers are using so many different technologies because of this uh, different persona and the different skill set that we see uh, that they are, uh, you know, employing in their uh, daily activities. So you as a enterprise or a business that uh, is running DevOps, you need to make your organization as free and open uh, and integrated as possible, just to ensure that each and every resource that you have can maximize his productivity by choosing and picking the right technology that matches his skill set. And that, you know, the return on investment for you is that you are getting better code faster. You can also look at this as another best practice. Uh, and I talked a bit about test automation coverage earlier, but I, here I'm combining both test automation coverage and uh, test scenario and platform coverage. So as you see here, when you start shifting from left towards right, you know this is where you are going to really maximize uh, the continuous testing benefits. You know, when you're starting with a local dev team and they're doing the build acceptance testing, maybe they're fixing a bug, they have very little amount of time to do their coding and, uh, you know, commit uh, to, the, to their branch or whatever they're working on. They will do just minor testing on a minor amount of devices. Sometimes it will be an emulator or a simulator once it will be a real device or a browser. But as you move a bit to the right and you're starting to do some acceptance testing, build acceptance testing, you see that the scope is piling up. You're adding more platform, more coverage, more environment conditions. And obviously when you're moving towards the integration, you are starting to maximize more scenarios, more legacy environments, uh, all the newer uh, conditions are varying, more scenarios are being added. Okay, up until you do the full aggression, and this is, you know, the maximum suite that again brings you the maximum value that you can run on a nightly basis. So this is how you would build a pipeline from left to right. But when you're talking about pipeline, you want to make sure that your pipeline is always green, you know, putting garbage, you know, into your CI, into Jenkins and other CI servers is one of the most common pitfalls that we see in Agile and DevOps. You want to make sure that this pipeline is always green and clean. Otherwise, you know, this is just uh, some monetized example of how much it costs you uh, a week from both minutes and money to deliver on a, you know, 90% reliable build, okay? In a week, you're going to waste 200, uh, 900 minutes and a build will cost you 50 bucks per, per, per one broken build. So it's not just about the best practice, it's also about uh, being efficient and cost effective because if you are not taking care of your build acceptance testing and you're breaking your build because of test flakiness, uh, environment which aren't reliable, all the things that I mentioned in the beginning, it piles up and sums into money, waste, and time that you actually don't have in a you know one week sprint or so. Before we wrap up this short keynote, I just want to uh, zoom into uh, what pipeline visibility looks like. I showed you the CI, you know, the Jenkins, but it's not just Jenkins, it's also looking at the wider picture of your test suite. And it looks about, <laughs> it talks about how many fr frameworks or platforms are flaky. What is the most common root cause uh, like a failure or a blocked reason. This is taken from Perfecto. We have seen it all. We see so many common pitfalls, devices that are in use, like or orchestration issues that customers are facing, uh, elements not found, using flaky objects, pop-up handling. These are all noise. These are not bugs in the product. And these are things that are slowing you down. So when you are running an automation suite, can be regression or integration, any automation that you are running, you need to look at the report and ask yourself a few of these questions so you can understand if your suite is delivering value or it's just slowing you down. Things that are constantly failing needs to be excluded for debugging. Things that are uh, failing because of noise needs to be excluded, fixed, and only after validation needs to be put back into the suite. It's all about continuous maintenance, continuous optimization. So you really have an automation that you can trust. And again, automation that you can trust is a moment in time. This week it's fine, 
Next week, something changes either in your suite, in your product, in the market. You need to have this process always running so you continuously get value from automation and deliver value to your developers that are ex expecting to get the feedback. To do so, you know, if you summarize a lot of the things that I mentioned in this keynote, you look at some of these key metrics, KPIs, you need to measure yourself, uh, not just to point fingers on what's wrong, but to actually improve, optimize, and continuously grow your test automation success. He talks here about uh, test automation reliability, test automation time, how much time you, it takes you to run a suite, the percentage of broken builds, and the, it goes on and on. You have a lot of good metrics here that you can use and apply. You can pick, you can add to what you're measuring today, but you need these measurements to be really in the elite stage of DevOps and continuously, again, evolve your business. Uh, and today it's mostly digital, which is much more complicated. With that, I would like to leave some time for Q&A and thank you for joining uh, my keynote here. I hope I gave you some value, some points for consideration in your test automation practices. Uh, coming up next after me is my friend Paul Grossman talking about uh, secrets of test automation, the magic object model in UFT. Strongly recommend to stay and listen to this guy. Uh, and again, thank you for having me and uh, looking forward to engage with you on social and after this session. Thank you so much.